I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Can you use a simulator to practice for a drone race? That's the topic of today's video. And for those of you who are experienced racers, the answer to that question is obviously yes. But I want to take you through the experience of practicing in Velocidrone for the 2019 Multi-GP Regional Global Qualifier. And then I'm going to actually race the qualifier and see how I do. Evan, today is a momentous day because your dad has been wanting to race me for a long time. Okay, yeah. He, he's, and I just keep missing races he's in and he keeps not exactly trash talking me. But, so. well, I will tell you that I, I do live with him. He, he flies more than me, 100%. He's in the backyard putting packs in way more than me. Yeah. So if anything, he's more prepared than I am. And who knows, maybe more prepared I put than like, you. I put like one hour in on Velocidrone last night. Uh, okay, <laughs> I mean, so but, it'll be, uh, racing's racing, so anything can happen here. Uh -huh. uh, we got 10 packs of qualifying, so it's just gonna be, who can have that one lucky run? Is he gonna beat me, or am I gonna beat him? What do you think? I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen you fly in a while. You've got some cool looking quads, and I mean, oh, so stop. your quads look cooler. That's that's but, gonna be a. That's I mean, not my dad's a flying van over motor, so who knows what his might fall oh in the air. Just, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm not trying to go fast here, uh, because I'm a slow pilot. No, because I'm just trying to be able to follow the course. Without having, I should be able to follow the course without having to look for the markers before I start thinking about going fast. That's my personal prerogative. Ah, oh, fooey. So as I start to feel a little more confident with the layout of the track, that's when I might start thinking about bumping up my up tilt. Again, it's gonna I think it's gonna be pretty important to have that be the same as it will be on race day. Yeah, shoot. As it will be on race day, because that's gonna affect how much deflection you get on your yaw and your hitch. Oh, you're yawning your roll. Oh, come on. Oh, that was close. And got it. Woo. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right, guys. I've been at this for a little bit. I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of the course just a little bit. Um, I did take my rates down from the default of 600 to uh, my normal racing rates of around 400 degrees per second. And... I feel like I'm starting to figure out some of the lines. Like for example, here, don't don't go too fast out there because you got a 180 and get that gate. Here, here, if we come through here, a little bit to the side, it actually sets up the next line better. Right? You're. So these are the kind of things that will apply, even if the physics don't exactly match the real quad I'm going to be flying with. Keep this tight and bring it back around. ASAP. Right here. Okay, and 180. Tight, and there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, Guy Wire got me. Oh man, that was... See, I can get on the throttle there early because I know where the gate's going to be. And coming through that line kind of on the diagonal is better. 29.83. Alright. Sam, who's going to win today? Me or Kevin Turner? 
Who's going to be faster? I'm going to have to agree with Jeff. I think that Kevin's going to win. Kevin's got more practice on the track, and I think he has a leg up in consistency. So what you're saying is if I do win, the odds, uh, the odds are against me. It'll be even more of an accomplishment. <laughs> I would say so. Do you have Kevin severely practiced, like ready for this race? We have multiple quads. In this matchup, like, Josh is the one with nothing to lose here. Like, it would, if it comes down to who wants it more, like, Josh really has nothing to lose. I have like, nothing to lose, Kevin but I has a lot of pride on the line I also right don't now, really want it. <laughs> That's an issue. That's a Josh. Why would you ever say that? So there's no doubt that learning the track in Velocidrome definitely helped. I knew where all the gates were coming from, and I almost, I should have, like, watched it one more time before I flew. I still had, I had one case where I went the wrong way through a gate. But big, big advantage. I also feel like getting used to the rates in Velocidrone was a big, big help. Um, I fly much higher rates for freestyle than I do for racing, and just getting the, that, the muscle memory of the 400 degree per second rates was exactly the same. I didn't have to familiarize myself with that different stick throw. At, I would normally lose two laps easy just to getting used to the rates. So big, big advantage there. I was not super fast though. I feel like I could have gone even faster. Um, and that goes down to the fact that I didn't actually prep my quad, right? Like, the, I, like I eyeballed the up tilt, but the up tilt was a little bit less than I might have preferred. And uh, they didn't go as fast as I could. So I'm gonna tweak that. That's really not the best way to do well at a race. You should, I don't think you should really be tweaking your up, especially your up tilt very much during a race. It just messes you up. But that is how it goes. Let's see how I do on my second lap. Oh, and by the way, by the way, my lap times, about the same. About a 30 second lap. I feel like I definitely can go faster in real life just because the quad actually flies like a real quad. I mean, no matter how good the simulator is, it never feels like the real thing, but Velocidrome was pretty close. I think I might see why Razors like it. You're, You're in the ready? first seat? You're in the, in the first seat too? Yeah. I know. I think they did Kevin. that on purpose. Kevin, everybody seems to think you got the edge on me here. Yeah. They seem to be saying you're more practiced, uh -huh. and they don't seem to think I have enough natural talent to make up for my lack of practice. Yeah, yeah. I think they're right. Why do you care? <laughs> Why? All this time you've been like, come on, Josh, let's race, let's race. All this time you were just like, let me just, I'm just going to squash you like a bug. Yeah. Why uh, did you want to race me so bad? Well, because you're famous, man. i got to race somebody famous. All right, so my second heat, I feel like uh, the adjustment for the difference in just the way things feel and look between the simulator and real life is done. I'm still adjusting to my quad and getting that kind of dialed in. The change in up tilt, I think I'm right where I need to be. Um, I'm just on the edge of the quad feeling faster than I can control it. I don't think there's any point in going faster than you can control it, getting crappy lines. I gotta stop making mistakes going the wrong way through the gates and stuff though. That's no good. Um, I had a 25 second lap. That's the fastest I've done either in real life or the simulator. And hopefully if I can keep consistently doing those 25 second laps without making mistakes, I'll be doing all right. Well, here's something that uh, the simulator can't prepare you for. I got mid-aired and I flew the whole rest of my race with this instead of my antenna. Thank you TBS Unify for being awesome. But now I gotta freaking get a new pigtail installed before my next heat or a new antenna or whatever. How about putting that in the simulator, huh Velocidrome? Just halfway through, you have to repair your quad. Oh, wow. Yes, I need time. I'm still repairing my quad. Needs time. He's over there learning things. Insane. Give me the allotted yeah. time. Ow! Oh. oh, yeah. Don't do that. I've done that. No, I don't need stitches. <laughs> that was, un I mean, that was entirely predictable, but also completely surprising. Everyone does it the first time. You I don't. I've Every, never used that the before. First time everyone does. It. Yeah. yeah, I told him to be I didn't careful. Know. Whew! I'm just glad I was able to finish that one without any technical issues. Yep. Oh, that was the first one where I started feeling like I was learning the lines a little more aggressively. Like being able to come out of a turn and aim to the, where the next turn is going to be with with aggression as opposed to exiting the turn and looking for the next gate before you then throttle up. Um, I reckon if I'd have spent more time on the sim, maybe I would have got there. I never really got, I, like I learned the track layout on the sim. I never got to that point on the sim though. Hmm. 
Quad Doc's beat me. He's beat me. He's down in the 21, 22 second range for his laps. I'm in the 25, 26 second range. But I guarantee if I had put more time in on, on the sim, then I would have been able to come out here with more authority. I ain't mad. Just a fact. Okay, I'm a little mad. I wish I had spent more time. I spent just enough time that I started to feel like I knew the track. And if I had spent more time, I would have been able to make the most of the actual time I had here on my actual quad. Um, when Evan Turner was spotting for me, he was he had such an awareness of the track. It was like you got a fast guy about three seconds behind you. You got slow lap traffic coming up ahead. He had such an awareness of the track, and, and that gives him the ability to avoid midairs, to take a wide line when he needs to, etc. Um, and that, I think, is experience you only get by actually racing. Do you do you use Velocidrone to practice for races like this? Yeah, for sure. Velocidrone is something that I do a lot. I um, They have races every Wednesday night and Saturday night, so they have a uh, Wednesday night series to where every Wednesday night everyone gets in a Discord, um, and it's a Velocidrone Discord, and then they have a race where they announce the track two hours before, so it gets you really good experience in learning a track and getting used to a track quick, because that's what you have to do here at these races. There's, they announce the track, you're like, okay, and then you get like X amount of practice batteries, which usually isn't that many, and then you're into the racing, and you're, you're stuck with it. So it's really good practice for a real race like that, even if it's not the same track. So you it's, would use it to practice even if it's not, like yeah. I used it to learn the track. Yeah, exactly. But you would use it even if it's a random track. Yeah, so every Wednesday night, they, I get on Velocidrone, it's, they announce the track an hour before, I'll get on Discord, I talk to my friends and whatnot, we all fly, practice the track. And it's spec racing, so all the quads are identical. So mm -hmm. the racing's super close. Uh, anyone can do it. You qualify, you get put into mains. So then you're racing the guys who are exactly your speed, and then you try and move up. And if you're fast you get enough, used you... to a race format, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. You get used Qualifiers, to racing, practice. racing under pressure. I shake more in the sim racing than I do in real life because the racing's so much tighter in the sim because everyone's let, gotten let, so good on it. Let me ask you this. Uh, one of the things I found that you can't prep for in a simulator is technical issues, like your, yep. just your stuff's broke. Yeah. But the other thing I was thinking about is stuff like mid-airs, race lines to avoid collisions. Yeah. Does, do, you, do you think the because uh, I haven't, I don't multiplayer in the sim much. Does it help with that? Now, there, there's no mid-airs in the sim. However, like when you fly a track that you're going to fly in real life, it is good because you can analyze, like uh, especially when you're doing multiplayer, you can see the pass that the other people took. So you can see where there could be a mid-air and stuff, which you can put into your real life flying. So I, I think that it can help like that. I got knocked out of the air twice yeah. by a pilot taking a different line than I was taking, yeah. mm -hmm. and we were coming together. I'm not going to say who it was. <laughs> We were coming together and we were impacting. If I had practiced in the sim with other people, I might have seen, oh, some people are going to go left around that gate yeah, instead of right. Exactly. Maybe we would have known that. Yeah, exactly. And the, most of the guys, like at least I do, and most of the top pilots do, they fly the same lines in the sim as they do in real life. So You, you could can, scout your opponents. Yeah, you can scout oh. your opponents. You can see what they're good at and bad at. So you can find your places to pass because that's a big thing is when you're in a, such small tracks and there's so many quads in the air, you got to know when to pass. And that also mm -hmm. comes with race experience as well because when you're racing in the sim, you'll be like, okay, I need to pass this guy here. And I know I can get ahead to make that last you could push still, to win. You could still do that in the sim because you'll see the guy. Yeah, you, exactly. Even if you don't collide. Because when what? you're pushing to, get, to win the race, you want to know when you can pass somebody. Yeah. So if you're like, okay, I can pass him here. And that translates to real life too. I have one more question for you. Why does it seem like all, in your opinion, okay. does it seem like all the top racing pilots fly Velocidrone? I think, for one, Velocidrone does the most with Colby Curtola and all the Velocidrone team. They are constantly having races and uh, like, Recently, there was an $1,000 prize purse race for Velocidrome. So a guy, there was a 12-year-old kid who made $500 at night just on Velocidrome. And he, I've, I've watched him from the first time I saw him Velocidrome to becoming like one of the best pilots on Velocidrome. He beat me and a much, every other good pilot on Velocidrome. Not to say, and that's not to say that other sims don't do that, but like other sims, I know DRL has the tryouts and they can, you can get a $75,000 contract and, and, and that's would, awesome. You, you, in fact, did... <clears throat> You, you were too young to actually accept the prize, yes, but you did I, I win that. Yes. So um, you fly, D, you fly DRL. Yeah, you I fly flew all that. I flew. I fly liftoff. I fly DRL. Like when all the because uh, most multi GP tracks come out on DRL first. So I always get on. I fly with the they're, guys. They're the official sim of multi GP. Of multi GP, and that's DRL is doing great work. They're doing physics. They're getting real life physics and real life data to put into the sim, and it, they're doing awesome stuff. So they're constantly getting better. But I just feel like Velocidrone right now for especially with all the races they're doing and the community they have already so you, built up. You, you, I think it sounds like what you're saying is that the reason the top pilots fly Velocidrone is not necessarily because it's like 
the best or most accurate sim, although maybe it is, we're not saying it is yeah. or it isn't, but more because of the community they've yeah, built around exactly. it. exactly, and that's like, if maybe, if you think about it in a real life situation, there might be an amazing full-time track setup, but no one races there. Or you can go to some junkyard place but has 20 pilots. Interesting. You're gonna go, and I'm not, and you're gonna go to Velostrone, which is the best of both worlds in my opinion. Interesting. It's a, it's a great flying sim, they have all the new tracks, they have a great community, yeah. so you have all the best pilots, you have races every and Wednesday. If the pilots you're competing against are are flying Velocidrone on Wednesday, yeah, that's where you're gonna be exactly. too. You're not gonna go to DRL on Wednesday because they're not having races. Kevin, you beat me. I did, yeah. How does that feel? It feels good. You've wanted this for a long time. <laughs> I do, yeah. I have been wanting for a while. <laughs> I'm going to keep trying and try and beat you in the simulator, though. Yep. I, I think I could beat you if I practice more. You beat me in the sim, we'll call it even. All right, guys, that's going to do it. I am packed up, and I am ready to get the heck out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks to the Knoxville Multi-GP chapter organizers for putting on this amazing event. And thanks to Evan Turner, Heads Up FP, for, for giving his insight. I hope he doesn't get in too much trouble with anybody for the things he said. I'm sure he can take it. Here's the takeaway from this video. In my humble opinion, if you think that simulators are not accurate, not perfect, then you're right. They're not. But if you think that means that they can't help you become a better racer, you are dead wrong. And all the top pro racers already know this and are already using simulators to get better. They're showing up on the day of the race ready to go with skills and information that you don't have if you are not practicing in the simulator. So if you're a lower or mid-tier racer like myself and you're wanting to get better, that is the single biggest thing maybe that you could do to start getting better if you're not already doing it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, i got to get out of here. Happy flying, everybody.